Hello everyone. In today's video, we're gonna have a bit of a quick look at Sniper Elite 4 across iPhone, iPad, and Mac. First, let's quickly go over the tech of the game. Obviously, it's pretty clear by now, but this is a Metal 3 title across all platforms. Unlike the Mac version, Sniper Elite 4 is a lockdown experience on iPhone and iPad. You have no in-game graphical options. I compared the iPhone and iPad version to the Mac version. Here is a comparison between my M4 iPad Pro with 16 GB of RAM against my Mac. Now, here is a comparison between my iPhone 16 Pro Max and my Mac. The game runs at 30 FPS on iPhone and iPad 2. I think there are several reasons why this is the case, but I'll go into it later in the video. Playing on Mac is obviously a different story graphics wise. However, what's missing here is VSync as an in-game option. I checked the Windows PC version and it's available there. Hopefully this can be added in the future. It's not a big issue though. Sniper Elite 4 supports Metal FX upscaling across all platforms. Rebellion did confirm with me on Twitter that it's used on iPhone and iPad. I think they have opted for spatial upscaling. My take is that the game is being upscaled from 900p on most devices using Metal FX. I can see some ghosting with the image quality and there are noticeable aliasing with lines. That being said, it's less noticeable on iPads due to their higher output resolutions. On Mac, one thing I found is that the Metal Effects toggle doesn't seem to do any kind of upscaling, thus it doesn't improve performance. It seems it only does a sharpen pass. The game runs great on Mac anyway without this, so Metal Effects is not needed. Now let's take a look at the game's performance across some Apple devices. For performance, I tested the game on four survival maps, so I could recreate similar scenes on each device. Please note, I'm not very good at the game, so I'm sorry for the very basic gameplay. Up first is my M4 iPad Pro with 16 GB of RAM and my M1 iPad Pro with 16 GB of RAM too. On both devices, the game has no issues hitting the 30 FPS target. They never drop below 30. Although there are some frame pacing issues across the board as indicated by the metal performance HUD. To the naked eye, I doubt you'd notice this though. The GPU is quite saturated on both devices. A little more on M1, obviously. Both are typically seeing over 20 ms in most scenes. This means 60 FPS might be a little challenging if the FPS was uncapped. We'd want to see below 20 ms usage in the HUD to more easily achieve 60 FPS. Rebellion could probably unlock the FPS on M4 iPad Pro without much issue, but I think on weaker M series iPads, a locked 60 FPS might not be possible, but that is pure speculation on my end. Still, the game looks okay on iPad, and if you're comfortable playing at 30 FPS, it's, it's fine. On my M4 iPad Pro, the game reached a max outside surface temperature of 32.5 degrees. On my M1 iPad Pro, it was 35.1 degrees. This low temperature is great as there is no thermal throttling, which would impact performance. Rebellion maybe enforced the 30 FPS cap to avoid the device throttling too much. Maybe if they had 60, it got too hot and therefore the frame rate would drop, maybe. Now, how does the game go on my iPhone 16 Pro Max and iPhone 15 Pro? Again, 
both of these phones are able to maintain the 30 FPS target. However, frame pacing issues are apparent on both devices, although it's actually not as bad as iPad. Maybe this is due to the phones using a slightly lower resolution. But again, that is pure speculation. The CPU is locked to run at 30 FPS. Although the GPU usage is quite different between A17 Pro and A18 Pro. I'm not sure why, but we're seeing a higher usage on my iPhone 16 Pro Max. Both are running iOS 18.1.1 and have no other apps open in the background. A18 Pro is often over 30 ms. This means that the FPS could constantly float between 30 and 60 if the game was uncapped. Most would not enjoy this, especially for this type of game. Perhaps this is another reason why the game is capped at 30 FPS. Yes, visually the game looks worse than iPad 2, but on the small display, it's not noticeable. Again, if you're comfortable playing the game at 30 FPS, it's very playable here, and I think most people will be able to play the game fine. On my iPhone 16 Pro, the game reached an outside surface temperature of 35.9 degrees. On my iPhone 15 Pro, 34.5 degrees. Again, this low temperature is great, as the phones don't get hot, and therefore the frame rate doesn't drop. Last, let's see how the game goes on my two Macs. I have a Mac Mini with M4 and 16GB of RAM. My Mac Mini is able to comfortably play at 1080p ultra graphics detail. The game does not contain an in-game FPS toggle, and it also does not contain an in-game toggle for VSync, so the game will adapt its frame rate to your display's refresh rate. I'm using a 4K 144Hz display. As we can see, the game gets well over 60fps at 1080p ultra. Great. My M1 MacBook Pro with 8GB of RAM is best played at 1080p medium. This also provides over 60fps. Great. Although, do keep in mind, this game is quite old so it's no surprise it runs great here. Also, the difference between medium and ultra graphics is not actually that noticeable, so the game is very enjoyable like this on M1. On both my Macs, you can see it's showing under 20 ms for GPU and CPU on both machines. This actually allows us to easily hit over 60 FPS. If Rebellion could get similar results for the GPU and CPU, on M series iPads, I think 60 FPS will be more possible. Another option on base M series Max is to change your display to 60 Hertz in system settings. If you aim for a lock 60 FPS, you can more comfortably play at higher settings. That's completely up to you though. Okay. So that was Sniper Elite 4 on Apple devices. What do you think of the port? Are you impressed or are you, are you disappointed? Are you annoyed by the 30 FPS cap on, on mobile? Let me know in the comments. I really do hope in a future update, Rebellion consider adding a 60 FPS mode to devices that can achieve that frame rate. Visually, the game looks fine on mobile too. I do know that there is a bug right now with the Mac version where it is uh, not launching correctly. I didn't face this, so I didn't really mention it in the video. I thought I'd just briefly mention it here. So hopefully Rebellion can fix this uh, ASAP. Otherwise, uh, it's a good port. It gets the job done. Anyway, my name is Stewie, and thanks for watching.